Hi, I'm Lindsay Steffen with Wellspring on the Air. I'm your co-host for today's show. I'm here with Tova Kreps, Wellspring's co-founder and president. Today, we're going to be talking about the purpose of pain. So welcome, Tova. Thanks for being here. Hi, this is so much fun to have you interviewing me. Uh, <laughs> we both do these radio shows and these Zoom calls, so it's just really great to have you to interview me today. So yes, a change of pace. So, and this is a great topic, the purpose of pain. I think, you know, whatever season of life we're in, we definitely have all gone through suffering or had some kind of difficult circumstance, especially as yes. we get older, you get more and more of those piling up. So hopefully today True. will be encouraging and we can learn some things together. Yes, it's true. Yeah. All right. So I'm curious just about the title, the purpose of pain. What does that mean for you, Toba? Well, I, I think this is a painful time right now for people. And um, sometimes it's like, why Why do I feel so bad? Why, why is there pain? Why is there suffering? Um, we're calling it a mental health pandemic, really, that's going on here. And so um, it, I just want to kind of compare it with physical pain. So there, there is, a, it's like, why do I have pain? Well, the answer that physically you have pain to help alert you that there are there's something wrong with your body. First thing your doctor says to you is, where does it hurt? And, and so the purpose of pain is to tell us that something needs addressing. But I don't think we always think of that in the emotional realm. We think that, that if I feel angry, then I'm a bad person because I'm angry instead of anger being uh, having a purpose in our lives. And so um, I, I think I'm, the purpose of this show is to just kind of make us aware that these, these feelings that we have have a really valuable goal in our lives, which is to help us take note of things that need to be addressed. That's a great point. Yeah, even our negative emotions, the ones we might run from, they're actually telling us something valuable. So we have Very to tune valuable. in. Yeah, I think that's a big thing I talk about with clients with anxiety. We want to get rid of anxiety 100% is, you know, the goal. I say, no, 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 that's not what we want to do. Some of your anxiety is helpful. It lets you know when you're in danger or when you need to maybe just tune in and notice what's going on. So Awesome. Yeah, and it can be from big pain, you know, if it's a severe emotional pain, then we need to take a severe immediate action, you know, I, I literally can't function at work, or I'm crying nonstop, or I'm so anxious, I'm having panic attacks, you know, um, but it can be mild things like I'm just kind of across the board blue right now, yeah. you know, and so maybe I need to make some adjustments that, that lift that. So, yeah. Great. Okay. So some people would probably ask, I've heard this a lot in the counseling room, but why is there pain at all? Why is <laughs> suffering in existence? And think how rich we'd be if we could answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I will attempt to do it. And I think the, the, from a practical biological sense, um, pain is there to protect us. The, there is pain because um, if you were numb, like a, a leper may lose their limbs because they're numb, they don't feel it. And if you think on the physical realm, again, if you if you go to the dentist and they numb your whole mouth and then you're biting your lip and you're biting your tongue, those, if you had your feelings, you would protect yourself. The, the pain protects mm -hmm. us. And emotional pain is the same thing. So it protects us um, when we're angry, then there's an injustice and it tells us, I need to do something about this person or this thing that's, you know, running over me. And if we're fear, it protects us from danger. If we're sad, it helps us protect and take care of loss. So, so um, pain is there to protect us, um, but pain in the world is there because we live in a fallen world. And, you know, this world is broken. So ever since the fall, and those of us who are believers believe this, that, that um, we brought pain into our work and our labor, into our child rearing and birthing, mm -hmm. um, and, and it is just going to be there. It's going to be there as a consequence of the fallen world we live in, we now have weeds and thorns, et cetera, and hard work and heat. And, um, but, but it's also there as a result of sin, which is also a part of the fall, which is that sometimes we create emotional pain because of our own consequences uh, mm -hmm. for our own sinful behaviors, our addictions, our, we treat people badly and they leave us, you know, um, so it can be a result of our own, of our own 
doing. We didn't want those results, but but our behavior, our sins brought that in. I, As a passage here, Romans 8, um, from 18 to 25, I think I'm going to just read the whole thing because I think it, it's helpful. It says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subject, subjected it in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but we ourselves um, having the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eager, eagerly for our adoption as sons and the redemption of our body. For in hope we've been saved, but hope that is not seen is not hope for hope for who hopes for what he has already seen. But if we hope for what we do not see with perseverance, we will eagerly wait for it. And I think um, that's a little long passage. That's Romans 8, 18 to 25. For those of you who want to go back and read it, but um this passage just so describes that we live in a fallen world that's going to be filled with pain and suffering. And we're groaning, creation's groaning uh, for the day that we ha that we hope for where these things will be set right. So, yeah. Why is it so bad? Because we're not home yet. Yeah. Like we're aliens, as the verse right. says. Mm -hmm. This isn't our home. Yeah. Right. Okay. So emotional pain, what I'm hearing is it has a purpose to alert us to a problem, something that is off, something that needs attention. Um, I kind of think in the age of technology, it's like a, a notification on your phone. Ding. It's letting you know <laughs> kind of that, that pain. It's a little ding letting you know, hey, I, I need some attention. You need to figure out what's going on. So, well, how does that work though? Can you give us maybe some further insight into that? Yeah, so I think I have some principles here that I'd like to share about emotions. So feelings, we can call them emotions, call them feelings. Feelings give us a message um, so that we can take an action regarding whatever we are doing or not doing. So if you think about it, um, the positive, just like the physical touch things, if I touch something soft or pet my cat, like I want to touch it again, it says do more of that. It gives you pleasure and uh, delicious food. I need that second bite of that cake. You know, it, it tells you do more. This is great. Right. Um, so feelings in the physical realm, the emotional ones are the same thing. When we're really excited, we're really happy. We, we want to do more of it. And it tells us that this feels great to have a hug. We miss our hugs right now. Right. Oh, um, yeah. And, even the addiction world works in this thing because there's like a pleasure that happens and that's what can create an addiction. But our feelings tell us do more of this or less of this. So when you think of the negative ones like anger, anger tells us we need to get somebody to stop doing what they're doing or we need to confront them or we need to leave them or we need to forgive them. That's an action that needs to be taken too. Um, but the feeling, the emotion is giving us a message that something needs attending. So in this case, to do less of something, I need to, because I'm angry. Um, so I need to adjust something to make it not happening anymore. Um, maybe it's anger at ourselves, in which case what you're, there, there is an action to be taken with anger at ourselves. And that is to change our behavior, to repent, to turn the other way, to ask forgiveness, to make amends, um, to repent to God, to forgive ourselves, as well as receiving God's forgiveness. You think about sadness, and this is one I think people really under address, but sadness is there to tell us to honor what we lost. First of all, we have to acknowledge it. Sometimes we don't even acknowledge, oh, I didn't need that. I didn't, you know, and you're sad and you don't even know why. So, but uh, sadness tells us we need to grieve. We need to express our grief in ways, tangible ways, symbolic ways. We need to value something. We may need to replace something. Maybe we need to get some new friends at a new school or something. Um, and then another example would be fear. And, and fear tells us be careful, it says watch out. It's warning yes. us. Now, it could be false fear. It could be exaggerated fear, or it could be real, but it, it's a warning. It's the red light. It's the alarm bell going that says there's danger there, and we need to do something to avoid it. Yeah. Just hearing you, it really normalizes all of our emotions. We're, really, we're allowed to feel all of them, the good, the bad, the ones that maybe we avoid out of pain, but I hear that there's purpose with each of them. 
Yeah, and that brings me to the next point, which is that feelings are not right or wrong in and of themselves. Um, what we do is we judge them. I shouldn't feel that way. I mean, you've had people tell you don't feel that way, you know, and, and you can't, you already do. So what feelings are is they are responses to or indicators of what you believe is true. Now, what you believe could be a lie, in which case, so if I feel afraid but of, you know, a dangerous thing in the room and there is no dangerous thing in the room, then uh, the problem isn't that I'm afraid. The problem is I believe a lie. So, mm -hmm. but, but we need to quit judging our feelings because they just tell us what we believe. We believe something's dangerous. We believe we've lost something. We believe somebody's had an injustice with us, you know, um, but so they're not right or wrong in themselves. And I think that's where we get stuck. We judge the fact that we feel instead of assessing and analyzing whether what we feel is based on truth or a lie. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes me think even with our kind of trauma approach at Wellspring, how our amygdala, that alarm system in our brain, it can misfire basically. It's going off telling you there's danger when there's not, but even still attending to that, then you can actually get to the truth of it. Like you're talking about in counseling, you're realizing, okay, I have fear, but maybe it's a uh, unfounded fear and you can work through that and get your alarm system online again. Exactly. But if, if all we do is judge the feeling or stuff it so we're not allowed to feel it, then we never actually question whether it's an appropriate feeling based on truth. We just judge it, dismiss it, ignore it, don't like it, medicate it. We do a lot of other things. Yeah. So healthy living is to, is to actually notice our feelings. Do so we let them come and we notice them? Oh, wow, I'm kind of sad today or I, I feel teary about that or I'm a little anxious or, or you know, I'm excited, any of these things. And we notice them um, and then we l listen to them and attend to them and we let them guide us to figuring out what's true and then what actions we need to take because of it. Very good. Well, we have about a minute until our break, but I want to ask you one more question. Okay. So nobody wants to feel pain. And so do you think people generally do avoid bad quote unquote feelings? They absolutely, because we don't want to feel pain. And this is because we're smart people. We, we don't, we, you know, we want to avoid it. And so I have a little saying that we say in our balance program called let them come and they will go. If we let our feelings come and give us their messages, they will go away. Sometimes we're afraid. Uh, we avoid the feelings. We're afraid we'll get stuck in them. If I let myself think about how angry I am, I'm going to be really angry and then I'll be out of control or I'll be so sad. I'll cry for weeks, you know, or whatever. That's actually not true. Our feelings, if the more we address them, if we let them come and we attend to them, they will give their message and then they'll leave. Okay. They'll, they'll go and then they open the door for other other feelings to come in. So we don't have to fear them as much as no. we do is what I hear no. you saying. Yeah, let them come and they'll go. I tell my kids in therapy, they're like clouds, let them float in and then they'll float on by. So... Okay. Well, great. This has been an awesome first portion, Tova. So we're going to take a short break. I'm Lindsay Stefan with Wellspring on the Air, and we will be right back. Welcome back to our listeners. I'm here with Tova Kreps. This is Lindsay Stefan with Wellspring on the Air. We're with our president and co-founder today, and she's speaking to us about the purpose of pain. So if you missed the first half of the show, definitely go back and learn a little bit about why is there pain in the world? Um, what can we do with it? How, should we avoid bad feelings or not? And the answer to that is definitely no. So we're going to continue along that vein. Um, so Tova, so far we've, you know, we've touched on some of those topics, but why do you think people actually deny that they're in emotional pain? Any thoughts on that? I think there's some really good reasons for it. And because the answer is because we're smart people <laughs> and pain isn't something we should seek out. We think there's something wrong with people who actively hurt themselves. Right. And so pain should be avoided and it's reasonable. And um, we're, we're just smart. But some of those reasons are not always helpful, but some actually are. So the first reason is that it's painful to feel it. So why, you know, why would I avoid feeling sad? I'll just go to the bar with my friends or I'll do something instead of feeling it because I don't want to sit here and feel sad. It'll, it doesn't feel good. Um, 
you know, sometimes we avoid it because we are actually trying to survive in the moment. And this is actually one of the good reasons to avoid the pain momentarily. So if I'm sad about, well, my daughter going off to college, you know, and I miss her, you know, it's not really very convenient for me to cry about that in the middle of my work day. So <laughs> yeah. I can, so it's about, I survived this. I'm going to get through this meeting. When I get home, I'll give myself time and permission to attend to a sad feeling. And so we're literally surviving the moment. Um, this is really true when we're in an emergency and yes. where we're really needing to, I, I just got to get out of the burning building. I just got to handle this crisis. I got to get through this. And so I need to not allow myself the full weight of the feelings. This happens with people's funerals all the time. So you yeah. lose the loved one, but the grief really starts after the funeral because you're so busy having to do these things and greet people and do all that. And so it's the weeks and the months later that people need to go back and attend to those things. And I, I think this is happening big picture, by the way, right now with, with COVID. People are in a lot of survival mode um, and it's prolonged and so they delayed some of their feelings because they needed to survive and get by but it's been way too long and so some people are going to have to go back and address what they felt during their survival of this these changes in our society yeah you're right and i think a good point here something i've learned with a lot of clients is when we're in survival, we sometimes we do have to just contain the emotions. So again, though, that's different than avoidance. Avoidance is mm -hmm. I'm pushing it in the closet forever. But right. I tell my clients, definitely learn, we need to learn to contain our emotions. So I'm not crying during my work meetings or <laughs> when I'm maybe picking my kids up from school. But then I do, I, I kind of bottle them just for a moment. And then I give myself time to attend to them later. So. Yeah, I like the word contain or even budget, you know, your time. But the key is that you actually give yourself permission at another time to do it. That's what we miss. We contain it to get through, but we don't make an appointment with ourselves to actually grieve or process that anger or journal about it or whatever it is that we need to do to figure out what it really is attached to and what we need to do. So I think another reason people avoid uh, feelings is, is shame. So if I let myself feel angry, I'll be ashamed because I'm not supposed to. If I let myself feel jealous, I might feel ashamed, you know, and yet if we don't address it, we don't, we don't like, like take something like jealousy. If I don't let myself really, you know, I am jealous of so-and-so. Well, then we never get farther down the trail to, I actually covet. And maybe there's a sin I need to repent of, or maybe I need to, I'm jealous of my coworkers promotion, but maybe underneath it, I'm kind of guilty because I didn't work hard and they got, you know, and so maybe I need to notice I'm jealous and maybe that will motivate me to do more work or so there are a lot of these things but we we don't want to feel shame either for shame for having the emotion at all or sometimes shame that the bad feeling is related like like I don't want to feel the pain of somebody rejecting me so I just won't feel a pain because I'll feel ashamed that they didn't love me that they went away that they broke up with me or 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 I don't want to feel that I failed and so we just don't feel at all instead of letting ourselves grieve our failures and learn lessons and do better next time, you know? Yeah, we stay in those cycles, like shame mm -hmm. cycles. I talk about that a lot in session and, and then they breed other things, addiction cycles or acting <laughs> out cycles. So yes, by, by managing them and giving them attention, you really are saving yourself a lot of grief down the road. So, sure. well, what else, Tova? Well, you mentioned grief. So that's another reason um, that we avoid pain is we just don't want to process loss. Um, our co-founder, Christine Schlotman, says, he who grieves well lives well. And I love that statement because uh, it's hard to grieve. We don't want to be in those places. But the better job we do of it, the sooner we're over the loss and beginning to live again. And um, so grieving well, just have a good boo-hoo and sit on the couch with your big bowl of ice cream or whatever it is you need to do, you yeah. know, honor it, go to a graveyard, you know, do something symbolic, write some letters, journal. But the sooner we do it, the sooner we, we keep living back in joy and, and just honor and replace and love that what we lost um, instead of just 
stuffing those feelings. So, so we avoid loss and grief because sometimes we don't know what to do with it. We're not very good at doing something with it. And the last avoidance reason would be change. If I really look this feeling in the eye, I may have to do something. I may have to kick somebody out of my house, my, you know, my adult kids, or I may have to change jobs, or I may have to do something that would be hard or, you know, um, or that I think I can't do or would be too hard. So change often comes with a real good close look at negative feelings. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think of so many like codependence and our own addictions or yeah, our anger issues. And sometimes, yeah, we're not ready to change yet. So we avoid it maybe until consequences you were talking about earlier <laughs> from natural consequences prompt us. Okay. Maybe this is something I do have to address. So, okay. So I'm hearing obviously that emotional pain is not to be avoided. So if we know that truth, what should we do instead? Well, it's really what I said a little bit earlier. If you people were listening earlier is that uh, we need to let the feelings come just notice them, let them come, get in a good time and space and say, what am I feeling and notice it. Um, and then take some uh, analyzing of is what I believe here true? Is it not? What is it attached to? Often we have feelings that are, we don't know what they are attached to. Like I just feel sad, but I don't know what I'm sad about, or I feel angry, but I don't at everybody. And I don't know what I'm angry about or whatever. And so letting the feelings come, taking time to address them, and then trusting they'll go away when we take the, the right actions. The feelings will, will quit giving us those messages. Um, yeah. Okay. So even going a, a little bit more practically, any other thoughts for um, listeners who are saying, okay, that, that sounds great. I want to do that. But tell me practically, what would be a next step? Well, so let's put it into four steps. So we'll, we'll practically. So step number one is to notice the feelings at all. I, I am feeling something. What is it? And so really that may mean just a little bit of space in your head or in your life or in your schedule, uh, turning off the noise and the phones and the distractions um, and saying what I noticed something I am like, really, sometimes our behaviors are a good key to noticing. So we're yelling at our kids a whole lot. Then we need to notice, notice that. So maybe I'm just generally irritable or generally angry or generally sad or you know what is it so noticing our behaviors that are not typical of, of us you know um easily irritable is a great is a common one but there are other things maybe noticing that you're less interested in things you used to be interested in that would be a sign of sadness and depression so like i don't even want to go to the family party anymore i don't want to i don't want to be with my friends i so you, so noticing is step one Okay. I am feeling these things. So step two is not judging mm. ourselves. That's so a good I'm one. Highlight that. <laughs> give myself permission to feel the feeling without judging it. So for instance, there's a great resource called um, the Tapping Solution. It's an app and we recommend it at Wellsprings called the Tapping Solution. And it's using some EFT, emotional freedom technique, to tap in positive emotions and feelings and such. But the first step of it is to say, even though you're tapping, even though I feel or think, or this is disturbing, I deeply accept myself or something along those lines. It's like, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to start by not judging so that I have the opportunity to analyze it and think it through to its fullest. But if you're judging, you're going to go jump, jump straight to shame and not going to ever process it. So yeah. one is notice. Two is judge. Um, three is analyze. So that's like, what is it attached to? Is it true? Like, I feel angry. Well, why do I feel angry? Because I believe I should always get my way. <laughs> is yep. that true? <laughs> so if I'm spoiled and I catered to and I just believe I should always have my way and the reason I'm angry is because you know if you analyze that and you come down to the bottom well they should have given me what I wanted when I wanted it well that's why I'm angry okay well is that true that people should always give you everything you want <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's a challenging thing. Some people have not faced that little analysis yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think 
Along with that, yeah, I think with the judging piece, it made me think of our our Christian audience too, those who are believers. I think that's something maybe at church, some churches do a great job and some don't just teaching us it's okay to feel our emotions and, you know, to actually like feeling anger and jealousy. Maybe yes, in a sense, they're a sin if we continue and act on that or continue to dwell in that place. But simply having a feeling is not necessarily a sin. And so I think giving ourselves permission to really explore the difference between those two sides of the coin. um, I just wanted to point that out because I think as you're saying that probably some people have questions coming up like, wait, anger is a sin. But we even see in the Bible, Jesus was angry, right? Turning the tables over. So I think it's more is the place of your heart. Is it festering anger? Or is it something, again, an alarm bell letting you know to deal with something? Right. Having the anger is not a sin. Um, Taking your anger out on the wrong people or in the wrong places, dumping your anger on other people. So our feelings are allowed, but it doesn't mean you get to dump them on other people. Um, What you you do with them. It means you need to process them yourself and figure out what they are. But the fact that you have, and then the other thing that may be the sin is, like I said, a belief underneath it. So if I'm always angry because I believe falsely that everyone should cater to me all the time, um, the sin is that selfish piece versus the anger. The anger is just a messenger. So it's some hard work. (laughs) It is some hard work. (laughs) Yes. And I will, I'll give a plug, of course, for Wellspring, just that if you need someone to support you during that hard work, that's what we're here for. Or if you're noticing, hey, I I live in this place of negative emotions. As I'm listening, I'm thinking that's my everyday life. Mm -hmm. Then it would absolutely be helpful to get some individual, family, couple, whatever counseling. So we're here for you. It was complicated. I, I I know we're at the end of our time. So, but the fourth thing, so notice them, stop judging, analyze. And the fourth thing is to take an action. So the, the feelings are there to help you take an action, the negative ones. And so um, we need to take, do something about it to change the reality that, around it that's causing it, our behavior, other people's behavior, even if the action is forgiving somebody, uh, that's an action. So there are a lot of actions we need to take if we take the time to allow ourselves to let our feelings come and go. I like that. Even the simple actions of a deep breath before you speak when you're irritated, you know, those are small things you can start even today. So I hope this was helpful for everyone. Again, we don't have much time, but I wonder if we could just um, hear a quick verse from you, Tova. I know you had one in mind regarding. I I have a few. uh, Hebrews 12, 11 says, all discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who've been trained by it afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And bad feelings are not always discipline, but but it is this, the painful things in life, the purpose of pain is not for us to suffer. It's not God punishing us. It's to guide us and train us so that we can have fruit that's positive because we took the right actions because of it. Awesome. Okay. Well, we are at time, so we're going to wrap up. But if you have any comments or questions, Tova is available for our audience. So you can email her at Tova at wellspringmiami.org. Tova is T-O-V-A. If you would like more info on Wellspring or you would like some of our resources, links to articles and podcasts, go to www.wellspringmiami.org. You can also subscribe to our email newsletter there. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thanks again, Tova, for this awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, this awesome time together. I love to learn and hear from you. So I'm Lindsay Steffen with Wellspring on the Air because hearts and minds matter.